Okay, now it's better. Okay, so I formally welcome you all to this course, Economics. And you can see that here, the it's H-I-B-E 1100. You don't have to remember it. Uh, it's just that we differentiate the courses with some codes. And before I go any further, I would like to introduce you to this Optima workspace. The Optima workspace, which you can see here, like any other course, I think except future, we all use Optima. Uh, maybe he also uses sometimes. Uh, but anyways, uh, we need to have a channel of communication between us. And that channel is discussion forum. Anything I want to convey you, I would do through discussion forum. Okay. But as I said in the morning session also, that discussion forum is a public forum. Everything is visible to everybody. Uh, if you want to have some course related discussion, questions, queries, use this forum as much as you can. All right. But in case you want to say something confidential, it's about you don't want people to know it, then of course you can send me a message via Outlook. But by the way, there is a function. You can also send a private message via Optima. Okay, so you have a choice. Uh, the document which I want to share with you today, which is already in Optima, is the course description. This is a Magna Carta. This is the key document. Everything from A to Z, how to get through this course, how to, what you are expected to do and what you are not expected to do actually. Uh, everything is mentioned in this document. Um, if I upload it, yeah, I'll maybe take it, download it rather. Okay, so you can see here that uh, it's like a welcome address to you. Uh, We shall be having two meetings every week. I will not read out exactly, but I will take the bullet points and share with you. Um, there'll be two uh, lectures a week. Most of the times, the venue will be this. But when I check in uh, Elmo, I could see there are at least two occasions when we are not meeting here, but somewhere else. My suggestion to you is that there could be some last moment changes also. So every time uh, you have a lecture, day before, you must double check in your calendar that is venue the same and is timings the same? Or is it going to be even a lecture tomorrow? Because I travel a lot and it could be possible that I have some emergency travel at the last 11th hour and I have no option but to cancel the lecture or I bring my substitute here. So in that case, uh, of course, I will convey you these changes uh, through Optima, but just in case you don't read it, uh, still it's not a bad idea to check in your calendar that is, where is my lecture and what's the timings. Uh, you can email me, that's my phone. Uh, you can, but don't call me uh, on Friday evenings, yeah? All right, so except Friday and Saturday evening, if in case there's a real SOS situation, <laughs> you can call me, okay? Uh, if you call me, Ashab, do we have a lecture tomorrow? Believe me, I'll be very angry. And what do I do when I get angry? I sing. Okay, that's scary. So don't do it. Uh, any updating changes regarding the course, whatever, venue, timings, topics, uh, will be done through the discussion forum, which you have already. Uh, our first lecture is today, of course. This auditorium, uh, Tulikari, uh, is, a is a nickname or the real name. Uh, yeah. What I expect from you at the end of this course, it is expected that you will become familiar with various economic and business concepts, their reasoning. Why do we have these concepts? Just to add one more word in the English dictionary? No, not at all. They have some applications. They have relevance. Both in micro and a macro level. Micro means at a very tiny level for a firm, for a industry. Macro means very broad for the whole entire economy. 
I expect that you start understanding the factors that affect economic business activities at the micro and macro level. You understand the monetary and fiscal policy dynamics and their implication. If you want to buy machinery tomorrow, if you want to upgrade the technology tomorrow, and just before you are inking, just signing the deal, you come to know that Suomi Panki, the Bank of Finland, Central Bank of Finland, is going to increase the rate of interest tomorrow. Reconsider your decision. All right? So how these big decisions are affecting your tiny, mini enterprise, you need to be very careful about it. Just when you are about to spend money on extending your uh, production capacity, you come to know that economist forecast of demand in Finland is not very optimistic. Reconsider your decision to invest. And if you have a lot of money, keep in the pillows instead of spending in the machinery and then getting the machinery rust and selling it in the secondhand market. So all these decisions you need to, what I want that in after this course, you are able to decode uh, the information and apply at a very entrepreneurial level. So the idea is that you get the big picture, the big discussion, the big concepts, the big thoughts, big discussions at the country level, at the global level, and then decode, break the Da Vinci code, get the gist of that information and try to apply at your own company, which can be a one person show. You can be a one room enterprise. But believe me, as I said, karma is great, yeah? Whatever happens at the world level, whatever happens at the country level, whatever happens at the regional level, it affects you. You are not aware of, doesn't mean that it doesn't affect you. So in order to see those big developments and, uh, you know, and applying those changes, understanding those changes at your enterprise level is very important. And that's what I will try to focus. Uh, be able to identify key patterns and trends in business activities. We shall study at some stage how the stock market is behaving, how the markets are going up and down. What are the factors behind that? Do we learn lessons from them? Or we repeat the same mistakes repeatedly? Hmm? There is a saying that history repeats itself, but we never learn from it. So the problem uh, with the entrepreneurial world is that they become so obsessed with their own ideas, own thoughts, their key ideas, which are in their software, so much so that they feel that they're immune from external changes. They feel that the world is static. They feel that world is flat. But they don't realize that, hey, no matter how great ideas you have. Your company, your enterprise is not on planet Mars. It's on Earth, world. And all these changes across the world will affect you. Uh, understand multiple aspects of public finance. Global businesses, economic crisis, foreign trade, and financial economics. And then you are able to uh, participate in the discussion where you can put forward your informed arguments. I would be the happiest person on this planet when you make the presentation, which you will, of course, you have no escape. And I see that the quality of discussion is very mature. It's not, it's not first semester students discussing. Okay, so at the end of this course, you will be doing all these presentations and what you will be presenting, I'll discuss with you shortly. And the quality of discussion would reflect that how well you have understood this course. Um, I'm sure somebody would have told you that we, we have our own religious book, uh, if I can say so, in Young, and it's called The Study Guide. 
And in the Young Study Guide, we have some proverbs and the sayings and all those uh, prophecies. And those prophecies are, are called intended learning outcomes. What we intend that you learn. And then we have the categories of those intended learning outcomes, or we call them as a abbreviation. We call it ILO, ILOs. And the first one is that we have two types of KUs. KUs mean knowledge and understanding. K stands for knowledge, U for understanding, and we have KU1 and KU2. I will not read all of them, but I, I just want to give you an example. Look at KU1. It says, able to employ theoretical and conceptual knowledge to identify and analyze business problems in global context. You are able to employ the conceptual, the bookish, theoretical knowledge. And that knowledge helps you to identify what are the business problems you, you are facing or you may be facing, maybe you are not even aware of, in the global context. Now, a couple of times it happened uh, before that somebody objected, objected the use of word uh, theoretical and conceptual. They said that, hey, theories, books, come on, books are never used. I mean, the real life is different from the, the book's life. And I happen to say that for me, or to me, a theory or a concept is common sense. Can we make the such mammoth business decisions without common sense? To me, theory is not those pictures, diagrams, tables. No, 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 not that. To me, theory is common sense. So we also learn that how the common sense, how the, you know, the common sense, we say that it's very common, but it's actually it's very uncommon. The most uncommon thing is the common sense I've seen. Uh, and then I try to put those prophecy in the context of economics and how we, for example, how you can use KU1 in economics, the students can express his or her view about the structure and the function of the modern market system, how the modern economy works. Outline, master, analyze, and synthesize the core economic concepts. What type of business person you are who doesn't even know the meaning of inflation and recession? What type of business person you are who doesn't know what could be the impact of recession on your company? What kind of business person you are who is not even aware that you should cut down your production because recession is appearing? And what type of business person you are who is not spending any money or on R&D? And then you blame that you have been, the market has ill-treated you Okay, so all these concepts we understand and we find that application directly or indirectly in the field of business. And then the second prophecy that we have is identify and place into practice information based decision making approaches to business and managerial problem. And here I try to make it simple. The student is able to understand the major variables that make up macroeconomy and the effect that such variables can have on business operations. May I ask you, if you are a small startup company based in Uvascular, only two or three people are running, what kind of market risk are you exposed to? Or are you immune to the market risk because you're too small to be affected. Or you think that these kind of risk, these kind of big changes only affect the big companies. And since you are a small company, you can duck your head down and you can go off the radar. No, no, no economic radar will catch you. You think so? 
So if you are an entrepreneur, what type of macroeconomic, what type of big things, uh, those issues which are concerned about the national economy or the international economy can affect you? Taxes, yes. If tomorrow you come to know that uh, the tax rate in Finland is going down, your, your decision can be motivated by something, isn't it? Taxes, tax is a big decision. And by the way, do you make the tax decision? Do you put tax on yourself? No, it comes from outside. And all these decisions which come from outside, you need to understand in the context of your own enterprise. So in a way, we are studying entrepreneurial economics here. How, for example, Bill all said that there's a tax, tax can have a major outfall. The tax rate in Finland is obviously very high. All right. So you need to keep in mind that how tax can treat you, can push your profits, can, can actually shrink your profits, and you can be uh, non-competitive because of very high tax rate. What else can affect you? Competition. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You can lose your employees or you can have the competition from abroad. So even though there is less competition in your city, but the impact of global competition will affect you. Mm -hmm. Climate change is a big macroeconomic uh, factor, even though the word is economic. But of course, climate change has a big macroeconomic impact. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a, a gentleman who, who came from, who actually came as a refugee from Syria. And he said that the, the root cause this migration took place at massive scale is not just because of political, it is because of climate change. There's no water left. I mean, many rivers in Syria, which are in history, taken with a great pride, have dried out. There's no water left. And that's a very big cause. And this is the cause which has been put under the carpet. Nobody talks about that. So that's a very good point that environmental changes is another variable which we need to see in the context of your own company. The policies of the government. Mm -hmm. Yes, the state policy is very important. Yeah, that's true. The policy of the government are very important. If you find that uh, we are, that is why in many countries near the elections, all the investment decisions stop because people are waiting who comes in power. Okay. And if they have a fear that this government is not very friendly to the businesses, then people like to move away and then there's a lot of shuffle in their activities. So yes, the state policies play a big role. Uh, foreign policy is. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have a saying that when Uncle Sam sneezes, everybody catches cold. Uh, when Uncle Sam sneezes, then the whole world can catch cold, actually. So it's very contagious, yeah. So the global changes can make. So the things happening at the EU, this Brexit thing, uh, can have a lot of uh, fallout. The article you are discussing uh, during the daytime, uh, it can affect even a small company, you know. So these things. Uh, then we have this IS2, which means that you are able to interpret and analyze complex business issues from multiple perspectives. Please remember, the most important thing in this IS2 is the multiple perspective. Nothing in this course is absolute, nothing. Not a single word I speak is absolute. Whatever I speak in this course is in the relative sense, in a comparative sense, which is true in certain situation, but is absolutely untrue in another situation. Okay, so you need to see the bigger picture, the big picture, having lots of information, tons of information, then decoding, filtering out that information, uh, having those different, you know, those blocks and making a jigsaw puzzle and make some sense out of that in the context of your own company. 
is the main job of this course. This is the main objective. How to get that information contextualized to your own enterprise. Uh, the course contents are here. You can go through this document. I will not go word by word. It's an optima. These are the course contents, which you can see. Uh, we shall study the fundamental issues of economics, uh, production, consumption, exchange, distribution, uh, then the state policies, monetary, fiscal policy. Uh, the, state, the state has two remote controls. You know, like you have the, when you have root remote for the tally, the state has two remote controls to govern the economy. And one remote control is called monetary policy. What happened to my English? Monetary policy. And the second one is called fiscal policy. Every state in the world control the economy by two ways, the monetary and fiscal policy. The country which are so-called capitalist, they use more monetary than fiscal policy. The countries where state is very active, like in Finland, welfare state, the state use a lot of fiscal policy in relation to monetary policy. So depending upon your ideological, what kind of democracy, what kind of state you are, that depends. So these, the usage of these two remote control, uh, depending upon whether you are very capitalistic or very socialistic or in between. Uh, we shall talk about the board of directors, how the company is running its operations on a day-to-day basis, who are the people who take decisions, and more importantly, what is their mindset when they make those decisions. Uh, do you think that they're the, most in, they're the best informed people? Well, not always. Uh, how to make the data, information analysis, national income, interest, asset pricing, fundamentals of finance, investment, and we have tons of, basically it's like a cocktail. Uh, basically we have everything about it. But we shall try to contextualize it as much as we can. Uh, you have several, uh, you have the lecture slides. Uh, the books I read the least. I myself, I'm, I'm not very big fan of reading the books, but of course you need some book. Um, Sloman's book is very good, but any book for that matter. Right here, I was trying to make a list because I have to make it, I have no choice. And eventually I couldn't control my anger and I have no option but to write that, hey, any book, who cares? Any book is fine. So wherever, from wherever you find a book, it's okay. I use the book least anyways. So. <laughs> Okay, yes. The, the library here, the, I'm looking at the young library, mm -hmm. uh, here, yes, so the like city library is good too, is that has actually sometimes direct links with, I guess you know that, mm -hmm. with universities in the US, etc. So sometimes you can have access mm -hmm. Text. The only thing is that in order to have access to these, you have to use, you have to be in the library mm -hmm. and use the library computer. Very right. Yeah. Very right. Yeah. Did you get it? Thank you. That's very important information you shared. I, I would have forgotten otherwise. Uh, but uh, did you have your session with the lady? Uh, did Kirsi continue? So pro perhaps you should contact her more. That hey, if we want to use those uh, dedicated computers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to put, uh, I mean, she, well, mm -hmm. the person I'm staying with used to be that person at the scary store, which I think she's a, a sort of a, I guess, a, she's a head, a really, into what you call information. Yes, information uh, officer. Information yes. On the, via computer. So I should think there is still somebody like this, highly qualified at the scary yeah, yeah. And you're right, I think, uh, so that. Um, I think that they organize special sessions mm. to teach you how to use the system. The library, yeah. That's I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is that, uh, because these data sources are very expensive. Absolutely. And what they do is that to make it more economically viable, they only subscribe for a limited usage. And when I say limited usage, it means that only two or three computers 
have the access to those databases. So you can't use any computer, by the way, you know, if you go to lab. So you have to go to the library and ask for those uh, specific computers where you can have those, uh, you can access the database, okay? But in case you have a problem, please come to me and we'll, we'll sort out. But for, for me, uh, number one, I use the book least. Uh, and for me, any book is a clone of another book. So there's nothing new. So textbook is fine, but most important thing would be the lecture slides, which I share with you. And the, and the extra literature, which I share, reports, articles, videos, that is something which is keeping pace with the time. You know, books are slightly lagging the pace. The world is going very fast and the books are not keeping pace, unfortunately. And even there are new addition, but they're nothing more than some cosmetic changes. Maybe they have new picture or something else, but nothing much changes. Uh, that's the link to my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, this one, and I have around uh, 50 plus videos about different courses. Okay. So I would tell you which video to watch, which not to watch, but well, there's no video which you can't watch, by the way. Um, but of course, I would be recording this year's videos also, these lectures, and then put on YouTube. And uh, the way you can find the video is that I always write the course, the lecture title, and the date. So you can know, okay, today's 10th of September. All right, 10th September is written in the video title, so you can easily find out. Um, these are some of the web sources which I'm obsessed with. Uh, you'll be using uh, extensively. Uh, the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, is, is a very good database. If you, if you have interest in big issues of economics and politics, uh, society, this is a fantastic data source. World Bank, Bloomberg, uh, Reuters, BBC, YouTube in general. Social Science Research Network, this is my passion. Right from my day one of PhD till date, no other database has ever impressed me than SSRN. You can find fantastic articles because the problem is that these published articles, the research papers, uh, they're very expensive if you buy from some database and it's possible that our Yamk library don't even have them, okay? Then Social Science Research Network can be a fantastic source. I will explain it then we go that how to find the information but this is my uh, many of many colleagues of mine they use google scholar i never use it uh, i always go for ssrn they give me very direct to the point articles and moreover uh, i don't need any other data source I, I can get all the articles whatever i want i can get it uh, International Monetary Fund, IMF website, World Bank. International Financial Corporate Corporation website is fantastic. Reuters coming again, there's some repetition. Uh, those who have interest in finance, which I have, uh, most of my students who do, re do research in finance, uh, including ourselves, Kumbayeva, we use this website a lot. The good, the good thing about this website is that you can find the stock market information for almost every country in the world, even Papua New Guinea. Uh, so you can find from everywhere. And if you want to find the stock market data, not just information, but the numbers, how well Nokia has been behaving for the last five years, what is the situation of Kune in the last 10 years, then we use this one, NASDAQ Nordic, OMX Nordic database. Uh, all the no, uh, Nordic countries, including Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, uh, you can get the data of every company, basically. Every company. There's no company, uh, but the subject that that company has to be a public listed company, you know, the stock company, not, not the private startup or something like that. And then, some way, at some stage, you will also study the corporate corruption. How white collared corruption, how pervasive, how deep, how broad it is. All right, 
then we go to this uh, is the bell ringing when you read this is it huh panama papers do you know panama papers you know wikileaks yeah, yeah. yeah? okay so this is like a thing which shows that how deep they also tell you that how how to do better corruption i mean they they tell you that okay fine this is a nice way this this or this is an old fashioned way of corruption let's do some better way you know we we all do innovations and some other things and then comes very important part how i would assess you well there are three criteria of this course Am I recording it or is it? No, actually it is. Can you record it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is recording here. Yeah. Very good. Good job. Yeah, so there are three uh, criteria. The first is the closed book written exam, which will be held on 11th of December, 2019. And this exam has two parts. The part one is descriptive questions. And once again, as I said, that we follow a book very religiously. And that book is called ILO, the study guide. And these are, these are the things which I would be testing. I would be testing in the answer, can I see KU1 somewhere? Can I see KU2 somewhere? And I'm giving you an example. For example, uh, how, how can I check your KU1? And imagine the question is, explain the mechanism of exchange rate determination. Okay, the student explained the core concepts. Each question assesses students' ability to identify a set of relevant concepts and their application to the real world. Are you only giving me the bookish knowledge or are you also sharing with me that how the exchange rate practically have an impact on the companies. Okay. That's KU1. KU2, identify and place. I'm reading out the same wording which I did before. So the wording of KU1, KU2 remain same across the board. Identify and place into practice information-based decision-making approaches to business and managerial problems and how I test it. Imagine the question remains same. So I'm, I'm finding now KU2 with the same question. Remember, in, even in KU1, I gave you example of same question, which was explain the mechanism of exchange rate determination. And what you need to do here, when students find the reasons for the value of the domestic currency, let's say Euro going down against some foreign currency and they find that the Bank of Finland is advocating something, you know, some, some practical issues. That's what I want to see in the KU2. Okay, but don't worry, You'll, you will learn all these things because I have made my slides according to these KUs and IS so that they are in sync, they are in line with each other. So that is the first part. The second part would be, uh, I don't know why I write 30% here, but the whole exam is 60%. Uh, the business and economic information analysis. I will give you some small, I would be copying and pasting some plagiarism. Well, it's okay. Not for you, but for me, but don't tell anybody. Uh, in the exam, I would be sharing some news clippings you know some some headlines from business page and i would expect you to not only explain in simple words but also through the lenses of theory that if you read that in the brexit the uk wants to postpone brexit what is the reason and if that reason can be explained with some theory with some concept and to me, a theory and a concept is nothing more than common sense. You don't have to write any Einsteinish or Newtonish theory. Uh, to me, theory is the common sense, the basic ideas. 
And then the second thing, which uh, is the group presentation. Exam, needless to say, is individual whenever I examine the group, yeah? But then there is a group work, which is 30%. Uh, and what you will do is, no, 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 as I said, the second part of exam is 30% is wrong. So I, I'm sorry, I would delete that. Your whole exam having two parts is 60% altogether. That's my fault. The next, after 60% comes this 30%. Yeah. <laughs> so after 60% of exam, then comes this 30%. I would take away that. You're right. Well spotted. And what you will do here, there is a body called World Economic Forum. And World Economic Forum, almost every year in February, February is their favorite month, they organize their annual general meeting in Davos, in Switzerland. And over there, everything which economic, social, political, environmental, technological, whatever issue you can see, which can affect the society is discussed there. And here you can see the full link to the videos uh, right from 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 19. What you will do, you will form a group of four to five students. And out of these options, I would prefer that you pick up 2019, but I have no problem at all. I mean, if you think uh, that, hey, video is very interesting, but it's 2016, why not? It's not a big deal. Uh, you make a team of four to five people. You select a video out of it, something close to heart. Watch it many times and make some answers to my questions based on that video. And what you need to extract from that video is a very common principle. That who are the people speaking? What are the key issues? Where you agree, where you disagree? And is there any conclusion out of it? And this, you will make a slide presentation. And then, on, when actually? On 3rd of December and 4th of December, you will give their group presentation here in the, in the class. Okay? Uh, but, before you give the presentation, you need to upload your file, and only one file is needed, no Word file is needed, just PowerPoint is needed. And this you will be uploading in Optima. And if I can show you, there's a folder of assignments, and here there is a return box. Here, you will be uploading your slides, you know, the one file, PowerPoint file. That, that's the only thing I need. And then on third or fourth, whenever you book time with me, again, you book the time with me through discussion forum. You give me a disclosure that, Shab, we are five people. All right, I'm the team leader. This is the video we have chosen. And this video, we prefer to show not on third, but on fourth of December. Okay, lock, your time is booked. Nobody will touch your video anymore. So it's like a, like a first come first serve basis, right? Uh, I don't like, well, some exceptions I've made in my life, but preferably you should, every group should choose a different video. And here you will be making a presentation of 10 minutes and then we have some chit chat interaction based on that and you get the grades. And keep in mind that I never give grades in absentia. Which means that if you're five people and one is absent, whatever is the reason, um, the person cannot get the grades, unfortunately. You have to be present. So only those group members who are present giving the presentation would get the credits. And those who can't, because of any reason, I don't say that you are escapist or you run away. There could be genuine reason. Or you can fall ill. All right, then make a separate arrangement with me. Uh, I would still want to see you and test your knowledge. It could be by Skype also, no problem. It happened once that there was a 
there was a one student who she has an ex some accident and she was not able to come. But the way we did that, when the four girls was presenting, the fifth one was via Skype. So, it, but still she presented. Yeah, I count her in. Okay, so there are many possibilities, but there is a return box here, and this return box will close. What time? On second of December, two thousand nineteen at eleven p.m. Uh, the return box will close. And here I have explained to you what exactly you are supposed to do. And this is here. Okay. Uh, you have to discuss the core ideas, give your arguments. And please remember, I think I discussed with you when we met in Hungas Yarvi that I want to see your your thoughts. I want to see your creativity. Okay? If you are reading my slides or the given study material and you recycle them, reproduce them, hmm, I call it academic puking. Uh, the highest marks you can get, the highest grade you can get is, if I'm in a very good mood, is three. There's no way you can get five. To get it five, I want to see your thinking. I want to see your thoughts. The question is, any thinking, any thought? No, no, absolutely not. It has to be very structured, organized views, convincing. And give me uh, one mantra you can get that to get good marks in, in economics, never stick to, never take sides. Never get stuck to one way of thinking. Give me the alternative thoughts. Tell me that tax is bad because there's a hole in the pocket. All right, but is tax good also? Yes, of course. How can we be a welfare state without taxation? So give me a very balanced discussion. Okay, interest rate is bad because you have to borrow at a high rate. Well, the interest rate is good also because people start saving money, at least. They are, uh, this is one way, this is a financial discipline when the government want to save you from spending money in unnecessary things. Of course, the police cannot come to your house and stop you from consuming, but the one way is that they can raise interest rate up so that you save more money and you're dissuaded from unnecessary consumption. Okay, so give me the both sides of the story. Never take, don't become polarized. Give me a balanced view of both sides, okay? But with some convincing arguments. Remember, I'm very strict. Uh, the last thing, these are some instructions how you should make slides. Uh, please go through it. And one thing I would, definitely very vocal about is that when you do the group task don't encourage the free riders please it's good that you help your friend but help your friend in understanding the concept don't do your friend's job because by doing so you are actually harming your friend from knowing the things okay so don't let free riders in the group okay so please be careful about it the last thing the last but not the least is that I have reserved 10% of your grades. How actively you participate on discussion forum. I have a habit that if I find something interesting, some concept I share with you on discussion forum and then expect from you to go through that and take part in the discussion and so on and so forth. And it's not only me who has to share that. You can start sharing, find some interesting article, all right, some good information, share with everybody, and then people jump and start discussion. And when I record the video, for example, today's session is getting recorded, I would convert this video to YouTube, I would share it on YouTube, all right, then, one way, one another way is that you can also put give your comments, you know, on, because you will be having access to it. So this 10% grades depend on how active. I don't want you to be super active. I don't want you to be obsessed with discussion forum all day, all night. 
And at the end of this course, I will not count how many times you took part in the discussion, but I want to see you that yes, you are active. You have been active and what you say makes sense, right? So even though it's 10%, but still every mark count. Mm -hmm. So how active you are, um, can we seriously, am I scaring you actually? Really? But don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> this is the first lecture, right? But once we go through, once we start, everything will calm down, okay? Um, yeah, but don't worry, don't, don't stress. It's very important for me to share all the things with you right now, okay? So it's very important that you go through this document thoroughly, okay? And uh, one last thing before I call it a day, is that uh, what is the scale of grades? You have five, four, three, two, one. Um, of course, there is zero fail also. Uh, when I see that an answer has three, KU1, KU2, and IS2, all these elements are there, it's a straightforward five. Uh, even though I really want that you should focus on the language issues, but I never bring language as a barrier from getting high grades. So you can write or speak Oprah Winfrey's English, but that doesn't mean that you will have the five credits. Okay? So as long as you follow the, the, the ideas of KU1, KU2, and IS2, it's a fiver. High five. And if you have only KU1 and KU2 and it's IS part, that how you, how this intellectual skill is missing. Knowledge is reflecting, knowledge is showing up, but the creativity, the intellectual thing, thoughts, that's missing. Uh, the highest you can get is three, four is a little bit exaggeration, but three something. Uh, and if you only uh, reproduce the concepts, uh, theoretical concept, and it's just one or two, uh, kindly bring your own computers in the class as much as possible, because many times uh, we shall do some stock market data analysis. So in that case, it's good that you have the computers and we are following the websites together, right? Uh, okay, so then it's finally my best wishes to you. That's me. That's my email address. And there we are. Okay, so the objective, <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks. The whole idea of this uh, session, I know I'm, I'm stuffing your heads with lots of information. But you don't have to read and memorize everything from day one, right? But some ideas, okay, you should uh, keep in mind that uh, if I were you, uh, the first thing, if I were you, the first thing I would go through in this document is that, hey, what are my expectations? How can I fulfill KU1, KU2, and IS2? Okay, I give you a home task. And you can even start discussion in the discussion forum that, hey, KU1, KU2, IS2, what SHAB means basically. I know he gave some example, but can somebody give more examples of KU1, KU2, IS2? And then let's see what, what is your opinion about it. Hmm? Normally, I don't take part in a discussion on every second message, but somewhere I, I jump in the discussion. Okay? So please go through it and tomorrow, uh, we shall start our first topic, uh, which is like very introductory lesson, very basic. Mm -hmm. But I can promise you that all my slides, not each slide, but the set of slides will be in accordance to KU1, KU2, and IS2. And if at all, of, of, of course, uh, we, we make errors and I'm also forgetful, rather I'm very forgetful. Uh, if at all you find that some elements of KU1, KU2, IS2 are missing, say it loud. Thank you so much. And we shall see, we shall meet tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. <laughs>